Justice Department rules do say, for better or for worse, that presidents can't be criminally charged while they are serving as president. But if the federal prosecutors had determined that Trump had committed these crimes with Michael Cohen, right? Nothing would stop them from charging Trump for those crimes the moment he was once again a private citizen. And the head of the U.S. Attorney's Office that did this investigation, that brought this case, he says that Trump's guys at the U.S. Justice Department monkeyed with this case. They monkeyed with this investigation on Trump's behalf to make sure SDNY would never and could never determine that Donald Trump committed these federal crimes. This isn't something that like we had to worry might happen. This happened. And the whistleblower on this was the guy who was running the U.S. attorney's office that got monkeyed with. He was in a position to know. Another revelation from Jeff Berman's book was that when Michael Cohen pled guilty, Trump's Justice Department made prosecutors at SDNY strip out tons of references to Trump in their court filings. And so, yeah, the the big damning document they ultimately filed contained that key phrase that Cohen acted in coordination with and at the direction of individual one. But Jeff Berman says that the document his office had planned to file was much more explicit about Trump, about Trump's involvement in Cohen's crimes. What they'd wanted to say was that Trump acted in concert with and coordinated with Cohen. Apparently, when Trump's Justice Department saw that, they were livid. They made SDNY cut down this court filing from 40 pages to 21 pages, and they made them strip out all the most damning findings about Trump in order to protect Trump from this federal investigation. When they, when they got done with it, the final document no longer said that Michael Cohen had committed his crime acting in concert with and coordinating with Trump with individual one. Instead, the final document said Michael Cohen acted in concert with and coordinated with one or more members of the Trump campaign. One or more members of the Trump campaign was Trump. But Justice Department officials in Washington, people appointed by Trump, made the prosecutor's office take that out. Jeff Berman also says he was ordered by Trump's Justice Department to investigate prominent Democrats at Trump's behest, including John Kerry. (laughs) Berman says he was told right before the 2018 midterm elections that his office should bring charges against a Democratic lawyer who had been President Obama's White House counsel. Berman's office looked into it, decided not only had (laughs) Obama's White House counsel not done anything to warrant being prosecuted, he actually hadn't done anything at all. He was innocent of what he was being accused of here. After Berman refused to bring those charges, Trump's attorney general, Bill Barr, then tried to push Berman into resigning. He even put out a late night press release in June 2020, claiming that Jeff Berman had resigned Jeff Berman had not resigned, and he said so. He refused to go, and he did that in part because he had just seen what had happened in another important U.S. attorney's office after a total takeover there by Trump's Justice Department. It was in the D.C. U.S. attorney's office that these schemes went even further. Barr, in the D.C. U.S. attorney's office, had succeeded in ousting the U.S. attorney there and instead installing his own people. That U.S. attorney's office in D.C. then immediately moved to drop the charges and undo the guilty plea from Trump National Security Advisor Mike Flynn. They moved to undo the recommended sentence for Trump advisor Roger Stone, who had just been convicted on multiple felonies. This was the same U.S. attorney's office that also folded to the pressure to bring charges against Obama's White House counsel after Berman refused to do it because there was no case there. Jeffrey Berman saw what had happened in the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office, and he did not want to allow the same thing to happen in SDNY. And so Jeffrey Berman fought. Barr puts out this press release saying Berman has resigned. Berman puts out a statement saying, oh, no, I haven't. And there was this dramatic 48 hours in which Berman twice refused to quit, refused to let his office be taken over by Trump's attorney general. And then finally, Trump fired Jeffrey Berman. And the victory Berman won in fighting so hard and making so much noise is that after he was fired, he made sure that his deputy, a a normal prosecutor, was promoted to take his place instead of Bill Barr just sending Trump guys to take it over like he did in D.C. 
But this is, this is a very bad black mark on the record of the U.S. Justice Department. And the result of all of this was, you know, terrible drama, scary revelations about the Justice Department under President Trump. But it was also, crucially, a federal criminal investigation diverted and delayed and tampered with. The federal criminal investigation into the crimes for which Michael Cohen went to prison was stymied. And here's a key point. It wasn't just the federal criminal investigation, because while all this was going on at the federal level, the investigation into Michael Cohen, the attempted investigation of people beyond Cohen who participated in those same crimes, Trump, the revelation of Trump's personal culpability for these crimes. Trump's Justice Department, while all this was happening, they reaching, they reached down and put the brakes on the whole thing. Right? A, a corrupted federal Justice Department acting to protect the president, despite findings of law and fact. While that was happening at the federal level around the Cohen case, it had the effect of stymieing a potential state prosecution as well. Because New York prosecutors in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office were also interested in investigating and potentially prosecuting these crimes that had taken place. After all, these crimes took place in their city. But the feds, right, this was supposedly their case, and they asked state prosecutors to hold off while they pursued their federal case in this matter. What we came to learn, though, is that the federal case wasn't happening. It was delayed and diverted and perverted and ultimately stopped by Trump's appointees at the U.S. Justice Department. And so state prosecutors are twiddling their thumbs, wasting tons of time waiting around for the feds to supposedly finish this investigation, which is an investigation that's not actually happening because of corruption. It was months after Cohen's guilty plea that federal prosecutors quietly signaled in a court filing that the investigation was over and nobody, saw, nobody besides Michael Cohen would be federally charged. It was literally two weeks later, two weeks after that quiet admission from the feds, that, that state prosecutors started issuing subpoenas for their own investigation. So, so if you find yourself wondering why alleged crimes that happened in 2016 are only coming to trial now, well, one of the reasons is that Donald Trump's Justice Department succeeded in delaying and ultimately stymieing the federal investigation into the alleged crimes for which Donald Trump is now effectively facing a New York state trial. And in fact, that successful effort by Trump's Justice Department to forestall any federal investigation into Trump or any charges against him, we can see the legacy of that successful corruption, that successful corruption of the case. We can see the legacy of it in the way the Manhattan District Attorney has had to charge this case. Because one of the big awkward parts of this case that's now being tried in New York is that there's a crime that's being described here that's never actually been charged. Right? People who criticize this case that is often one of the major issues they will take of it. A crime is being described here, but if that crime is such a crime, how, can is, how come it was never charged? Right? The, 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 the New York DA's case against Donald Trump says these false business records Trump created in his real estate business, right, when he disguised these hush money reimbursements to Michael Cohen as if they were legal fees. These falsified business records aren't just a, a, a misdemeanor. They're, they're a felony because they were created to conceal another crime. What's the other crime? Well, the DA has described what he believes the other crimes are. One of the implicated other crimes is the federal campaign finance violation that prosecutors say Michael Cohen committed with Donald Trump. It is an awkwardness for this case that that federal crime was never charged against Donald Trump. It was only ever charged against Michael Cohen. But the reason that federal crime was never charged against Trump, well, it appears to be because the federal investigation into Trump's culpability in this matter was perverted on Trump's behalf by Trump's appointees. So that is kind of this big gaping wound sitting right at the center of this trial. It is a constant reminder that it is bonkers that only Michael Cohen and nobody else ever paid a price for this criminal scheme. Right? It is also a constant reminder, you know, of, of something else and something bigger than this case. It is a big, bright, flashing warning light about what we as a country should expect in a second Trump presidency. You know how scary it is to think about 
Bill Barr doing this with ongoing investigations, reportedly, with cases that have already been pled to, with sentences that have already been recommended by the Justice Department after conviction for him to go in there and get in there and just take apart all of those cases on Trump's behalf because Trump told him to? They were able to do some of that. They would very much like to do a lot more of that, which could upend any citizen's life in this country at the whim of Donald Trump. Right? We do not talk nearly enough about what Trump succeeded in doing to the U.S. Justice Department when he was president. He ousted U.S. attorneys. He got investigations into himself and his allies kiboshed. He got the case against his disgraced national security advisor thrown out, even though he had already pled guilty. He got the sentencing recommendation for Roger Stone reduced after Stone's multiple convictions. He got the Justice Department to investigate and even prosecute prominent Democrats he didn't like, even when there was zero case to be made. That all is worse than anything Richard Nixon ever did. And he was pretty bad on that front. It is arguably the worst thing any modern president has ever done to the U.S. Justice Department, to the rule of law in this country. It is the kind of scandal we should be keeping front of mind every single day as he tries to get back in the White House right now. It is absolutely the blueprint for where they would start to try to complete the unfinished business, right, of the first term if Donald Trump returns to the White House. That is where this case comes from, right? The tawdriest case imaginable, coming from the grossest and pettiest personal failings. All the while revealing a huge, serious problem for this country that we have not yet reckoned with. A core problem for our protection of the rule of law. A core failing of the rule of law, for which not nearly enough people have yet gotten in trouble. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.